Good morning, students. Am I audible? Please confirm in the chat box. Do you think so? Am I audible? Thank you for confirming, students. Thank you for confirming. Students, in case of any queries, you can always contact our support team. You can always contact our support team at the support. Email on support at the rate logic labs tech dot com logic labs test tech dot com duration of the course is forty days and for any update for any update session update you need to join our WhatsApp community group and this is the link this is the link for the WhatsApp community group you need to go through that and you'll be able to get the updates regarding the course. First five sessions will be free and from the sixth session, Zoom meeting link will be shared to the registered participants only. Classes will be from Monday to Friday. Saturday, Sunday will be off. And in case of any queries, you can contact our support team from Monday to Saturday between 9 a.m. to 7 a.m. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's start with the today's session. Students, yesterday we have gone through some basics. We have gone through some basics. Let's go ahead and just take a quick recap of what we have discussed yesterday. Yesterday we have discussed about what is Python. I've told you that it is a general purpose, simple, platform independent, highly interpreted, and high level programming language. After that, I have shown you what types of applications we can develop with the help of Python. With the help of Python, we can learn the web application development, like website development. We can develop the job, gaming languages, gaming applications. We can develop the artificial intelligence applications like machine learning and deep learning, desktop GUI, image processing application, text processing based applications. We can go ahead with business applications, audio and video based applications, web scrapping, harvesting applications and data visualization. Numerical complex based application can also be solved with the help of, can also be solved with the help of Python programming. Software development, operation system installers, CADM, CAM, and there are a lot many others also, like in automation industry, the schools, education industry, the hospitals, all are using the Python programming. Now, before proceeding further, let's start with the history of Python. We have already discussed about it, that it was conceived in 1980 and brought into the action in 1989. It was developed by Guido Van Rossen and officially it was released on February 20, 1991. Python programming language was developed at Central Viscundi Informatica, CWI in Netherlands. 
ABC programming language is the predecessor of Python programming language. As I've told you that it is managed and maintained by a non-commercial organization that is PSF, Python Software Foundation. An official website from where we can freely download the Python software is www.python.org. After that, we have discussed about the versions. Versions of Python, what are the major versions and what are the minor versions? Right now, we have the major version is 1, 2, and 3. And after that, point X, point 1, 2, 3, these are the minor versions. If we talk about 1.x, 1.1, 1.2, these are the outdated versions of Python programming. And Python does not support the backward compatibility. Python 2.x is a major, like I told you, Python 2.x, 2 is a major version and rest are the minor version. Same with the help of Python 3.x, where 3 is the major version and point 1, x, 2, 3, x, these are the lit these are the minor version. The latest version of Python programming is 3.11.5. So you need to download it from the official website. Told you yesterday I have told you the downloading process so I've shown you the downloading process of Python software also. Now then we started with the features of Python. Then we started with the features of Python. First of all we need to know what are the features. What do we understand by the features? Features are nothing these are the services and facilities provided by the language developers in the language and it is used by the language programmers for developing the real-time applications. So we have the 11 features which discussed about them. Simple, freeware and open source, platform independent language, dynamically typed programming language, interpreted programming language, High-level programming language, robust, extensible, embedded, functional and object-oriented language, support, third-party APIs like NumPy, Pandas, Matplo Matplotlib, SkyPy, SkyKit, Keras, Siebel, etc. We have already discussed yesterday, we discussed about the simple, freeware and open source, platform-independent language and dynamically typed language. So let's start. Let's go ahead with the further, but let's talk about the simple, why it is known as the simple programming language. It is simple because of its four features, because of its factors, three factors. One is it provides the rich set of APIs. APIs are the library so that the Python programmer can reuse the predefined code without writing their own code. So, Python-based applications are easy to develop. And if you talk about the APIs, APIs are application programming interface. It, these are the collection of modules, and modules are the collection of functions, variables, and classes. Second factor, why it is known as the simple programming language because of its garbage collector facility. Garbage collector, what does the garbage collector do? It comes and removes the unused memory space and in which helps an improve, improvement of Python-based applications. So garbage collectors take care of automatic memory management. Third factor, it provides the user-friendly syntaxes. It provides the user-friendly syntaxes and syntaxes are what? These are, if we talk about syntaxes, are exactly like the formulas so that the Python programmer can develop the error-free programming programs in limited span of time. In case, in case if we do any mistake, we will get the syntax error at that time. Second is, I have told you, it is a platform-independent language. Why? It is platform independent language because its values are stored in the form of objects. Okay, and we can, with the help of this, we can store the unlimited amount of data. 
and data type memory data types memory remains same for the or all OS. So Java object contains size restricted where Python projects contain the unlimited size and unlimited values can be stored in the Python. So all the values are stored in the form of objects. Freeware and open source freeware is just not said as freeware because it can be freely downloaded from its official website that is www.python.org. Standard name of Python is C Python. Some of the companies vendors came forward and customized the C Python and use their customized version in in-house tool. Some of the Customized version I have already shown you, like J Python, Iron Python, Micro Python, Ruby Python, and Anaconda. Why it is known as a dynamically typed language? We have two types of language: static type language and dynamically typed. In static type, we need to we need to define a variable with the data type. But if we talk about this dynamically typed we need not to define it whenever we run the program whenever we write anything we will get the what type of program or what type of variable it is we we'll get it on our end i'll sh i've shown you with the help of example also let's go ahead let's go ahead and uh, let me show you one more time like if i write a is equal to 10. Then B is equal to 12.4. C is equal to A plus B. Now, if I write, I need not to define the variable here. If I write A, print A, type of A, just a string. we will get it on our own. We need not to define the variable in the dynamically typed language. If I write print B from a type of B and print C type of C, We'll get it. The, what type of class it is? This is a class float. This is a class int. So we need not to mention it all the time. We will get it on our own with the you know, that is why it is known as a dynamically typed programming language. Now let's proceed. Let's proceed further with the day two topic. Let's go ahead. Features of Python will be continued. Now, as I've told you, it is known as the interpreted programming language. So, interpreted programming language means whenever we develop any Python program, we need to save with the file with the extension that is dot py. Dot py. Let me show you. As I'm writing a program, after writing a program, after writing a program, if I need to save it, I all, I'll i always save it with the extension that is .py. Let me show you. Let me show you. See, here, whatever file I'm, I'll be saving, I need to save it with the help of .py extension py extension like let me show you if i want to save one file if i want to save one file like i am doing the addition i am doing addition in that case like a is equal to 10 
B is equal to 20. C is equal to A plus B. And if I want to save this file and I want to run this, in that case, I need to save it, save this file with the any name is with they are like add add dot py. Py is where we write any program. If we write any program in Python format, that will be saved automatically in the py in the extension that is py, like edit plus. Let me show you. In the edit plus, all the files you can see it here. All the files are saved with the extension that is dot py. That is dot py. If I want to write any program and if I write file new others and I open any file, and in case I want to save this file, it will be saved automatically with the py extension. So whenever we write any program, we need to save the program that is with the extension dot py. Okay, so whenever we execute any Python program, two processes take place. One is the compilation process and second is the execution process. Now, what do we understand by compilation process? Students, in compilation process, what happens is, what happens is the source code, the source code submitted to the Python compiler and reads the source code, check for the errors, verify the syntaxes, and if no errors found, then the compiler converts it into the intermediate code. That is a byte code with an extension dot py. This is the internal process. And in case the error found, in case the error found in source code, then the error will be displayed on the console. See, see, what happens is, if I have saved this file, that is with the help of some .p file, what happens is the compilation process in the compilation, it will read the source code line by line. It will read the source code line by line and convert it into, if no, if no error will be found, then it will convert it into the byte code with the extension that is sum dot pyc. This is an internal process. We have saved the file with the dot py extension. It reads the code line by line and convert it into the byte code. Okay, with the extension that is a compilation process. Now, now, the execution process, the PVM reads the course Python intermediate code. Here, it will read the Python intermediate code, byte code, line by line, convert it into the machine understandable code. That is a binary code, executable or binary code, read by the OS and gives the final results. What happens is, what happened here is PVM, after the converting it into the byte code, PVM will execute it line by line. Okay. It converts it into the machine understandable language and gives the results. Okay. So two processes take place. First is a compilation process and second is the execution process. Now, in the Python programming, execution, compilation process, and execution process is taking place line by line conversion. And it is also one of the interpretation based programming language. Now, what do we understand by PVM? As we all told you, that PVM, PVM converts it into the machine understandable language, and the PVM reads the Python intermediate code. Now, what do we understand by PVM? PVM is a Python virtual machine. PVM is nothing. It is a Python virtual machine. It is one of, it is one program in Python software. What does it, its role? Its role is to read the code line by line, 
convert it into the byte code and after that convert it into the machine understandable which is a ex which is executable or binary is this clear any questions still here any questions still here students in case you have any questions just raise your hand no questions No questions. Oh, let's go ahead. Now, how it is known as the high level programming language? Students, in general, we have two types of programming languages. One is a high level programming language, and second, can I get the one student is asking me, can I get the recorded videos it will be uploaded it will be uploaded on the whatsapp group so please join our whatsapp group you will get the recorded videos okay now high level programming language in general we have two types of programming language one is a low level programming language and second is high level programming language. Now, okay, I'll share that with you. I'll share that with you. And you can contact our, you can contact our support team also. They will also provide. I'll share that with you after the, after this, I will show that to you so that you can note it down. Okay. As I've told you, we have two types of programming languages. One is low level programming language and second is high level programming language. In the low level programming language, we represent the data in the lower level data like binary, octal, hexadecimal, which is not understandable by the programmer or the end user. Okay. In low-level programming language, data is represented in binary format, octal format, hexadecimal, and it is not by default understandable by programming language. So do everyone understand the binary language or the octal language or the decimal language? No. No. It is not possible to for everyone. So, like... A is equal to 0 B. 0 B means binary format. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. In binary numbers, we have 1 and 0 only. So, is this understandable by everyone? No. B is equal to 0 O. 0 O means octal. 0 O 23. This is also not understandable. And C is equal to 0x, 0x, F-A-C-E. This is a hexadecimal. This is a hexadecimal, which is also not understandable by the end user or the programmer. So, what does the Python programming do? It converts, it converts the low-level programming language into the high-level programming language. In these programming language, even if we represent the data in the low level data, lower level data like binary, octal, hexadecimal, it will convert it automatically into the decimal number system, which is understandable by the end user. By the end user. Let me show you with the example. Let me show you with the example. If I say Anything like 0B, 1111, or let me write A is equal to, A is equal to 0B, 11111, 0111. Now, if I write print A, comma, typo, A. 
it will automatically convert it into the decimal format, which is understandable by the end user. If I write, same with the case of octal, 0 O, B is equal to 0 O, let me write 23. 23. Now, if I write print B, type of B, 19, 19, which is understandable by the end user. Now, let's go ahead with the example of hexadecimal. Let's take 0x, a c is equal to, c is equal to 0x, now if I write print c, type of c, c, we have got, now how does it take place, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about. So this is something which is understandable by the end user and the programmer also. So it automatically converts it into the programmer or end user understandable language of the programmer of the or the end user. That is why it is known as the. That is why it is known as the high level programming language. Now, one student wanted to know the WhatsApp group link. You need it is mentioned here. Please note it down. Please note down the WhatsApp group link, which you need to join for any updation. For any updation. Please note it down. And note down. And note down the details of our contact team also. Are you done with this? Are you done with this? Students, have you noted this? One of the students wanted to know that. Okay, let's go ahead now. Let's go ahead. No problem, student. That's my pleasure. Now, after this, it is a robust language. Python is a robust language. Robust means it is a strong language. Why? Because of its exception handling. Because of its exception handling. Now, what is exception? Exceptions are the runtime errors. Runtime errors of the program, that is known as the exception. In case if we do any mistake while writing the program, if we do any program any mistake, so whenever we run the program, it generates the technical error messages. It generates the technical error messages. So converting the technical error messages into the user friendly error messages is called the exception handling. Whenever we run, whenever we run, run the program, so whenever we run the program, and in case we have any technical error messages, it converts it into the user-friendly error messages. So that the end user should also understand or the programmer should also understand that what is the error coming. So this process of handling the exception is known as the exception handling and that is why it is called as the robust language. If the programmer uses exception handling in program Python program, it is a robust language. Now, extensible 
extensible Python programming give its programming facilities to the other languages also. It gives us facilities to the other languages also, like C++, which means the Python code can also be written in the other languages, right? C++. Okay, so that is why Python programming, that is why Python programming is known as the extensible language because its facilities can be used by the other languages also. Now, embedded, embedded. Python program can call other language coding segment for the fastest execution. Okay, what does it do? It calls the other languages coding segments also for its fastest execution. Example, Python code can call C programming code. It calls the C programming code also. That is why it is known as the embedded language. Now, extensive support for third-party APIs. Like, like some of the numerical complex numerical calculations which cannot be done or which will take more time in Python programming, it, at that time, it takes the support of the third-party APIs that is like NumPy. NumPy, okay? And as Python libraries, APIs can do many tasks and operations, but some of the complex operations need to solve more easily and quickly with the third party APIs like NumPy, which is used for the numerical calculations, Pandas for analysis tool, Matplotlib for data visualization. Same we can go ahead with SpyPy and Skype. Same we are done with the with this we are done with the features. With this we are done with the features of Python. Hope whatever we have discussed is clear to you. Any questions still here, students? Please confirm me in the chat box in case you have any questions. Please raise your hand. No questions? Good. Good. Now, we have done with the... Now, we are going to talk about the identifiers and literals in Python. Identifiers and literals in Python. Students, literals in Python are nothing but the values passing by the... Passing to the Python program. So literals are what? These are the values which are passing to the Python program. Programmatically, when we write any Python program, we must enter the inputs. And whatever input we make, that is called the literals or values. Okay? So whenever we write any program, we must write, we make, make the input Right, and all the inputs, whatever we make, are known as the literals or the values. So, all types of values are called the literals. In Python programming, we have five types of literals. First is the integer literal, floating point literal, str literals, boolean, and selection literal. Okay, so what are literals? understandable by you the values passing to the python program whatever inputs we make are called the inputs and we are called the literals and we have five literals first is the integer floating point str boolean and selection literals. let's go ahead with the identifiers with the identifiers 
So whenever we enter input or literals, they are stored in the main memory by allocating the sufficient amount of memory space with the help of data type. Okay. So whenever we make any input, we, they are stored in the main memory by allocating sufficient amount of memory space. Now, in order to process this data, which was stored in the main memory as a programmer, we must we must do some we, we must give some distinct names, and these names makes us to identify the values stored in the memory space, right? So at that time, what does we do? What does it mean to we do whatever data which is stored in the main memory? We need to give them some distinct name in order to identify them. So those names which are stored in the main memory are called the identifiers. Values of identifiers are changing or verifying during program execution. Okay, so values of identifiers can be changed or verified during the program execution. And identifiers are also known as the variables. So identifiers are also called as variables. So all types of inputs or letters must be stored in the form of variables. Okay, so identifiers are also known as variables. All types of inputs which we make should be stored in the form of variables. And all variables are called the objects. Are called the objects. We have already discussed about it. If you remember, if you remember, in the day first, we have already discussed about it. Let me show you. Let me show you. All the values in the Python program are stored in the form of objects. Right? Written here, same we have discussed. Same we have discussed. In Python, all values are stored in the form of objects. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead now. So what is variable? What is variable? A variable is an identifier whose values can be changed during the execution of the program. Its values can be changed during the execution of the program. In order to use the variable in Python pro program, we need to follow the following rules. What are those following rules? Variable name is a combination of alphabets, digits, and a special symbol underscore only. Which is the special symbol? It is a underscore only. First letter of variable name must start with either with an alphabet or a. Okay. So, first letter will be stored will be either with the alphabet or underscore only, not with the digits or not with any other special symbol. Let me show you. Let me show you with the help of example. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. If I write, if I write, One A B C is equal to one A B C or one cell is equal to forty five. This is the invalid invalid decimal ratio. Now, if I write underscore cell is equal to forty five, 
it is acceptable. It is acceptable. If I write sal is equal to 45, this is also acceptable. If in case of, if I write any other special symbol, any other special symbol is equal to 45, it is also not acceptable. It is also not acceptable. In case, if I write 1 underscore sal, just a second, 1 underscore sal is equal to 45. Is this acceptable? No. No. So, it should start with the underscore special symbol that is underscore only or with the alphabet or with the alphabet let me write anything like a b c a b c is equal to is equal to sal 45 sal 45 is not defined sal 45 is not defined now in case if i write a, B, C is equal to 45. This is acceptable. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and show you. This will be invalid. This will be invalid. Now, now, these are some examples. I have pasted that. Now, no special symbols are allowed within variable name except underscore. Within the variable name also, no special symbol is allowed. Like, like, let me show you. If I write, sir, dollar, One is equal to forty five. Is equal to four point five or forty five. Sal underscore sorry underscore one is equal to forty five. It is acceptable. It is acceptable. If I write like this underscore sal underscore is equal to is equal to 45 it is accepted it is accepted so in case if i write sal sal one two three is equal to 45 we get the error invalid syntax invalid syntax so I have shown you with the examples. I have shown you all this with the help of examples. Okay. Okay. But if we talk about the hash, if we talk about the hash, hash is acceptable. Hash is acceptable, but it is used for commenting in Python. Okay. It is used for commenting in Python. Please remember that hash is a symbol which is symbol which is used for commenting in Python. If I write sal sal is equal to forty five, that is valid. And if I write employee sal is equal to five point six, this is invalid because here space is a special symbol which is not acceptable. And in case if I'm writing sal hash employee is equal to fifty six, it is valid. But if we we'll write sal, 45 will be printed. Why? Because hash employee will be taken as, hash employee will be taken as comment. Is this clear? Is this clear to you students? And if we we'll write a hash sal is equal to 45 that will be invalid why because a is not defined earlier. any questions till now students any questions till now 
No questions? No question? Let's proceed further. Now, no keywords to be used as variable. No keywords to be used as variables like else and if. Keywords are reserved in programming language which has the specific meaning, which has the specific meaning and it gives special specific meaning to the compiler. If I write else, although it is starting from the alphabet, else is equal to 45, it will be invalid because else is a keyword. Else is a keyword. Let me show you. Let me show you. If I write else is equal to 45, it is not acceptable. It is not acceptable. But case, in case, else, else 1 is equal to 45, it will be acceptable. Else itself will not be acceptable. Now, if I write if is equal to 45, 45, it is not acceptable. Now, if I write underscore if is equal to 45, it will be acceptable it will be acceptable. Why? Because else and if are the keywords. Else and if are the keywords, right? Which are reserved with some specific meaning. Now, all variable names are case sensitive. All variable names are case sensitive. Let me write like, like, if I write age is equal to 25, it is acceptable. If I write A is equal to 22, it is acceptable. If I write is equal to 45, it is also acceptable. And if I write is equal to 14, it is also acceptable. Now, if I write print, print, age, age, comma, and if I want to write A, comma, then I'll get. So, these are case sensitive. These are case sensitive. Okay. Now, it is always recommend to the user friendly variable names. It is always recommend to use the user friendly variables name like total salary of an employee. We can do write like this also. We cannot give the space. We cannot give the space because space is a special symbol which is not acceptable. If we write like this, total salary of an employee is equal to 45, it is valid, but it is not recommended. So in order to understand it, sometimes it is very difficult to understand this. In order to understand it, we can write like this, total underscore sal underscore employee is equal to 45. This is valid also. And this is recommended also. This is valid also. And this is recommended also. So any questions still here, students? Have you understood the identifiers and the truth? Any questions? No questions. So, with this, we are done with the session today. With this, we are done with the session today. Definitely. Students wanted me to show the examples one.
these are the examples we have already discussed. Once you get the YouTube, yes, you will be getting the PPT. You will be getting the YouTube videos also for first three sessions. For the first three sessions. Is that okay? Good. So with this, we are done with the session today. In case you have any query, you can contact our support team or you can contact me on my mail ID. That is Ritu at the rate logic labs tech dot com. Logic labs tech dot com. Claudine, you are in my love of batch 148 also, if I'm not wrong. Yes, I'm not taking that session because I am not well. I am not well. Okay, I'll be continuing that session within two or three days. So I'll see you there. Okay, in case you want to join here, you can join. Can we have the folder for those who have paid? Yes, you will. What do you want me to repeat, Shalini? What do you want me to repeat? Will you repeat again the first few sessions? Every time I will, after we join, after you join, you will get the YouTube videos. Once you join the session, you will get the videos of whatever we have discussed till now okay whatever we have discussed till now you will get the videos of everything and the pp pdf also is that okay shalini you will get the pdf also whatever we will discuss in the class okay claudine thank you so much i will definitely get back to you i will get well Thank you so much for your concern and we'll see you in two or three days, okay? In our batch one for today. Till then, if you want to join this group, you can join. For first five days, you can join this. Thank you, students. Thank you. Till then, please take care of yourself. Goodbye.